Hello and welcome to this Affinity software tutorial where I'm going to be looking at where, you know, what type file type you should save your work as. Now this was inspired by an F64 Academy video which I've just recently watched and he's obviously mainly looking at Photoshop um, files, PSD files at the, sort of the end of his explanation but it is well worth watching his video because he will explain it far better than I can but he's looking at JPEGs, TIFFs, PNGs and then the Photoshop files so when he gets to the PSD files you just sort of swap that idea for AF photo files as we use in Affinity Photo but I will try and do my best to explain it in my way. Now this will basically all work the same in Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. Um, the principles are the same in all three programs but you may prefer a different file type in one program rather than another. Now I got to this website here which is by it's like 99 designs by Vistaprint. Now Vistaprint are a very large online printing company and this, I'm guessing this is their, part of their help pages. So they're looking at image file formats and when to use each file types. So we have this box here which they've very kindly made for us and so you have raster images and your file types are JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, TIFFs raw files and PSD which is the Photoshop um, so and it will tell you when to use these like JPEGs for the web and print and photos and GIFs for animations PNGs for transparencies and TIFFs for high quality prints and etc then you have the vector file formats which is PDF, EPS AI which is Adobe Illustrator but could be replaced for um, designer files and SVG which is vector files for web publishing so the vector images file formats will be best used in Affinity Designer Affinity Publisher and the raster file formats best used in Affinity Photo and then obviously can be used in designer and publisher as well. Further down in this article um, it looks at various things about rest of formats and then goes on to have a look at the difference between CMYK versus RGB and lossy and lossless type images. I'm not going to go through the whole um, web page. I'll add a link to this and to the F64 Academy video in the description for this video but just looking at JPEGs for example is like when you should use JPEGs and it's like dealing with online photos or artwork etc and when you want to print photos or your artwork or if you need to send a quick preview and when not to use JPEGs is if you want a transparent background and if you need layers so they'll have a similar thing for all the different file formats so I suggest you if you want to know more about it I suggest you look at this web page so coming to Affinity Photo and most of this will be done in Affinity Photo because it's the program I'm most comfortable with but the idea will work across all three programs now back in November 2020 I did make a video about how to save whether to save as or export so I'm not going to sort of go over all that again but I'll add a link to that video in the description in this one so it's basically so which file format should you use to save in now this is an image I took of where I live Walton and the Nays, this is the Nays Tower here and I've done a very quick edit with the I edited the raw file which is the background and then I've added four layers on top 
so when you save as a JPEG it will automatically flatten all these layers and make it a single file so it does reduce the size and sort of compress the image to make it a smaller file size if you use save as which is these options here save and save as it will save everything the background and all the layers and if you do include save history or document it will save your history which I don't have in this particular one because I didn't save it with the history but if you want to save your history you do that first and then go to save as it will make the file size a bit bigger but it is an option you could use so now I have saved this image different ways to sort of demonstrate the size that, that it will take so just taking the AF photo the file size for this is 91.4 megabytes and the JPEG size is 10 megabytes so that is like 80 megabytes smaller but the AF photo file format has all those layers that you can use and sort of go back and re-edit and what have you whereas once you've saved it as a JPEG sort of that is a flattened file and you apart from adding more edits you can't sort of go back and undo something that you've done before now the other file formats I've saved as a PNG and that is 63 megabytes so that is bigger than the JPEG version but smaller than the AF photo version again you will not get the layers with this and it's probably not best for using in a photograph like this it is best used for a logo like this one here which I have open I will open and in this case if you want a transparent background a PNG file is the best way to go so I could copy this now and add this as a layer with a transparent background and sort of add it to my image if I wanted to add my logo so if you want a transparent background the PNG is the sort of best way to go coming back to here now now the two TIFF files here, T-I-F-F -F, one where it saves with the layers and one I've saved without the layers so if I open both and come back to Affinity Photo so this TIFF one, first one it is with no layers so it's a flattened file much like a JPEG or this TIFF file has the layers with it much like the AF photo file so when you want to save this or export this I should say as a TIFF and you select TIFF you have I mean obviously you've got different, you can save it as 8 bit, 16 bit and what have you and once you've sort of selected what version you want to save is you have a tick under here where you can save with the affinity layers or save it flattened so I mean when we look at this here without the layers its estimated size is 16.53 but with the layers included it is 107.91 megabytes so you need to sort of if you're sending it to a printer for example they may want you to include the layers or they may just accept 
a flattened file format and you, know, you can then decide on how you want to save that file now a quick look at publisher now if I open this publisher file that I've got here now this is an, uh, an older written tutorial that I did back in February and it's got four pages and like each page has obviously got lots of layers on it to you know to get everything that I wanted on that particular page and then much like the in Affinity Photo you can save with history you save as and it will save it as an AF pub file or you can export it as a PDF which is probably the most likely thing you're going to use with publisher I would have thought and you can you can sort of change is this bit here the presets you can PDF for print is probably going to be the best quality of PDF or you can have PDF digital small size and digital high quality so you, you probably have to look at the settings that best suit you but if I come back to my file here I saved this document as a PDF in the small file digital file size and in the ready to print file size smaller one is 3.7 megabytes and the one that I saved for print is 8.61 megabytes so it is 5 megabytes bigger because I saved it ready for print rather than in the digital format but I mean when you open them you probably couldn't tell especially you know, online you couldn't tell the difference between the two I mean it would look exactly the same but when it comes to the printer they will probably you know stand a better chance with the higher quality one when you've got you know, images and things like that so I think that covers most things the file format that you decide to save in will depend on what you want to do with that particular file be it in photo designer or publisher I mean if you're just doing it for online stuff you know save it as a JPEG or a small digital PDF or I'm guessing I don't really use designer too much I can't really sort of guide you best when it comes to a designer but I would suggest it's probably you know SVG and other vector file formats that might be better suited for vector files but select the file format that's best suited for what you want to do with that particular project so like this if you want transparency use PNG if you want to include more data than a JPEG holds but you don't want to have all the layers you could use TIFF or if you do want the layers but and the quality and your printer design needs it you could use the TIFF with layers and similarly like with publisher like I said I save it in the either the smaller digital file format if it's just going online but if you send it to a printers use the uh, for print version so hopefully that has covered um, most of what you need to cover and I'll just leave you with this file format diagram here so you got the like I said you got the vector file formats and the ras raster file formats and where it's got PSD just you know that would be the AF photo file format and the AI vector file format would be the AF designer 
format. So hopefully this has been of help to especially beginners which is what this video is aimed at. Um, thank you for watching and goodbye.